What's going on guys? So just a few days ago, the company OpenAI released their API access for the new ChatGPT AI model. So basically, if you don't know what ChatGPT is, it's this chatting assistant model that OpenAI has created that you can talk to and it can do basically anything that you need it to from you know creating a casual conversation to giving you cooking recipes to writing emails. So it's just super useful and it's being trained off of data on the internet and data that people are interacting with. So on the front end here, I'm sure you guys are familiar with, you can go up and you can type to it. So how are you today? And it's basically just gonna talk to you and it can save context of the previous messages in your session to get a, basically a good conversation going and extract information. And now with these new API releases, basically what that means is you're gonna be able to call this model and get answers the way you are on this website, except you're gonna be able to do it through your backend and through code like Python, um, so that you can set it up in your own applications and you can make cool apps and stuff with this model being implemented. So how we're gonna do this is you need to go to openai.com and you're gonna sign up. Um, you can do it with your own personal email and just link it like I've done here. And once it's connected, you're gonna log in and you're gonna go up and end up on this general dashboard. So the first thing that you need before you can make any sort of requests or build any APIs with OpenAI's platform is you need a key. So to do that, go to your personal account and go to view API keys. Now mine are hidden here, as you can see, these are the two secret keys I've already generated. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna click create new secret key, and that's just gonna generate you a randomly generated key, and you're gonna copy that and you're gonna save it. That's what you're gonna use to authenticate all of your different requests. Once you have that, we're going to go over to Visual Studio Code. And again, this tutorial is gonna be for Python, but there are also other ways through HTTP requests to get what you're looking for out of the ChatGPT APIs. But basically once we're here, um, in order to do it with Python through this method, you also need OpenAI's library. So to get that, we're just gonna do pip install OpenAI. And you should get this message saying successfully installed OpenAI. And now one very important thing to note is that the new ChatGPT APIs only work off of the 0.27 version. So to make sure you have the correct version of the library, type in pip list, and this is going to give you a list of all the libraries that you have. Just find OpenAI and make sure it lines up with 0.27. If not, just uninstall the library and reinstall it, and then make sure you've got the right version. Reinstalling it will give you the latest version, so you should be good on that end. Now that we've got the library, we can import it. And you're also gonna import your key. So you can either hard code it and straight paste it, or you can use some sort of environment variable. In this case, I'm just gonna be bringing it from a different file because I don't wanna show it on screen. So we're going to be bringing from keys for it. And that just basically means I'm bringing all the exported variables from that other file, keys.py. Once you have these two, we're gonna go back to the documentation here. And in the documentation, you're gonna look for chat completion. So if you wanna read more on the creation and like the best use cases for chat completions, you can go to this guide, but this is just gonna be going over the basics. So as we can see, you import OpenAI just like we did. And now this is a basic example request that they've done. I'm gonna take this request, explain to you what's happening and show you how you can build off of it and do a little bit more with it. So we're gonna copy this, paste it in here. Now this completion won't work because we haven't put in our API key yet. So to do that, we're gonna do openai.api key equals openai API key. And this right here is the variable that I'm bringing in from keys. So if you were to hard code it in, you could do just like this and then API key here. So you could do it like that and just hard code the key in here, but I'm bringing it in from a variable. So I'm gonna do this and make sure it's just under openai.api underscore key. Now with this basic request that I've copied in, what it is is this is the model that they're using. So GPT 3.5 Turbo is the ChatGPT model. 
that's what it is, but that's what their trained model is called. And then just the friendly fun name that they use is ChatGPT for the front end. But GPT 3.5 Turbo is ChatGPT. The other thing that you need to pass into your completion is a messages array. So the messages array is the equivalent of your conversation history on the front end here. So as you can see, there's a back and forth that's being kept track when you talk with GPT on the front end website. That is a mimic of this messages array right here, with the exception of one more instruction. So if you'll notice that there is a role that is set to system, this is the instructions that you're gonna be giving to ChatGPT to tell it what its job is. So here, their basic example said, you are a helpful assistant, but you can modify this and change it the way you want to make ChatGPT more customized to your needs. So you could say you are a email writing assistant. And now it knows that it's gonna be specified for emails. You can give it even more instructions on its personality saying you are polite and funny. That'll sort of tailor its responses to what you're looking for. So the first thing you're gonna pass in is always gonna be the system. Um, and that's gonna be the instructions for the model. Then after that, it's gonna be a recreation between the user and the assistant of a conversation history. So user is what you or me are expecting to type. So that's our messages right here. The, hey, how are you today? From the messages from us go in as the user inside the content. And then the messages as the role of the assistant, the content is what the model has already given back to you. So, hey, hello, how can I assist you today? Stuff like that. If you have no past conversation that you wanna pass in, you can basically just not worry about this stuff. And let's say you're starting the conversation from fresh. You can go right off the bat and say, hey, what's up? So in order to get this running, we're gonna equate this response to a variable. And then let's take a look at what this variable will be returning. And now on the response body, we get a couple objects. So what's going on here is inside choices, you're gonna look for the messages field and messages content is what the model would have spit back. So because I told it that it was a writing assistant, it said, well, hello there. As an email assistant, I don't really have a lot going on. Um, and it keeps going because it's polite and stuff like that. So that's the response that you would be expecting to get right here. But instead of saying just hello, how can I assist you today? It gave that little extra bit because I told it it was an email writing assistant. We can see here further, it says role assistant. So that's gonna be in line with the role assistant here. You know that it's coming from the model itself. The other thing that you might wanna be keeping track of is your usage. So the total tokens field right here, this basically means how big your requests are and that will be in direct line with how much it costs to use it. Right now, when you first make an account, it's free, but the more you use it, you may have to start paying and that will be based off of how many tokens you use. Roughly four characters is equivalent to one token. Um, so you can sort of do the math on how big your requests are. Uh, so this one took 75 tokens. But if you're looking to get just the content back of what it's saying, so just a back and forth, you can print response and then that will go into the object of choices. That's where it is. And then inside choices is technically an array. So we need to go inside the first entry of the array to get to this. And then we'll get to dot message. And then inside dot message even further, we want dot content. And then we'll run it again. And right here, just under it, it printed just what we're looking for, the message back. So we'll comment this out for now, and we'll work with just the messages back. So let's say we want to mimic, well, let's say we're halfway through a conversation, and I'm going to show you how you can use ChatGPT a little bit more to have a context saved conversation. So let's say I'm going to start it off with saying, how do I make a sandwich? We'll send that in. And we got back a nice response here. Obviously, it's pretty basic. It's talking about peanut butter jelly sandwich. So we'll put that in here into our assistant. Now remember, we've told it that it's an email writing assistant. 
So once we give this content, this has nothing to do with an email, but we'll make it have to do with the email. So now we've recreated the conversation history with a user and an assistant. And then next step, we'll say, can you turn that into an email? And so now all these will be passed and the context can be saved for the model to understand what you're talking about. If you had just said, can you turn that into an email? It would have no idea what you're talking about, but because you've passed the past questions in and also the responses, the model will be able to make some sense of it. And now it can turn that discussion about uh, making a sandwich into an email. So here you go. Of course, here's a possible email and then the subject sandwich making made easy. And then it breaks it down into a nice email format you know, you could copy paste this, do whatever you want with it. Um, and that's basically how you make it context saving and have a sort of back and forth through API requests, just the way you would um, on the front end here. So that's just the basics of how you make requests through Python with OpenAI's model. Um, hopefully that can get you started doing some work locally. This new model is really exciting. There's obviously a ton that you can do with it. I'm sure you've already seen it from the front end. And now you can get to work uh, implementing it into whatever applications you're using. Um, so that's everything from me. Thanks for watching, guys, and uh, take care.